Hello everyone, I am Bets Golden. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be creating some cards utilizing this sweet little Lawn Fawn Thin Cut. And I absolutely love this. Um, the details on this are really, really nice. And I have a tip for you when you are running your this die through your machine. You actually don't have to take it apart. I spend a lot of time disconnecting and taking these little pieces apart and you don't have to do that. You can simply put it down on a piece of paper and run it through. And then what I like to do is I just like to make a whole bunch of different ones and colors and then I just pop it into a storage envelope and then I pop my die in with it and I'm ready to go. So even if I do have things like pink little leaves that I probably will never use, it's worth it to me not to have to sit there and fiddle and try to separate all these dies out and then keep track of them and try to line them up on the die cut machine. Easier if I just run the whole thing through on a piece of cardstock. All right, so I'm going to be showing you how to make this card the traditional way with what it was intended. It is an add-on for the Magic Iris. And so this is the pieces to the Magic Iris. This is what they die cut out into. And um, basically you are going to need three of these donut type deals. Then there is a die that goes in one of them. So you'll need to make one donut like this and then you need the tab for this as well as these three sausages and then the three little um, fasteners. And this is the die set. Now this piece right here, this is an additional one that does not come with this die set. But this is the interesting little piece I wanted to show you real quick. When you make your dies, you want to just go ahead and pop this into one of them and run it back through because that is an important piece. So we're going to go ahead and just assemble this together. And um, I'm going to give you some tips. One of the things that you need to be aware of is the only thing that's going to be showing ever are your little sausage pieces and your tab. So if you want to, um, you know, do those in a different color, I like to just use my ink and blend it out. The tab I'm gonna set aside because this is gonna be a little bit different. So you can leave all the other ones different colors. And even if um, you end up cutting them down into different pieces of paper, like different cardstock, it's totally fine. The only ones that you want to be concerned about ever seeing are these pieces right here. So I'm just going to blend through some of this dye ink. And you guys, if you have any questions about what products I'm using, I am gonna have them linked down below with direct links to, um, you know, whatever I'm using, like the little birdhouse and this ink and all that good jazz. So I'm just adding on some color. Right, so from here, I'm going to go and take my little piece with the, the additional um, scores in here and whatnot. And I'm just going to lay each of these little sausages in those cut open pieces and we're just going to put them on in there and we want to make sure that we leave the middle open that's super important for this so it's going to go as far back as we can get it and these pieces may show but that's okay we'll deal with that a little bit later and then you're going to notice that there is an x on the end of each of them and what we're going to do with that x is we're actually going to take a little mini glue dot and we're going to pop a little mini glue dot on each of those X's. Once you get all of your glue dots down, you're going to want to line it up as best as you can so that that center circle really shines through. And the best way to do that is make sure that each of these is pushed as far up and over into those little corner pieces as possible. Then you're gonna take your second ring and you are going to place it on top of these rings. Okay. 
Now from here, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna use these pieces as a guide to adhere our, our little extensions. And you're going to just wanna put on it some a line of adhesive down the middle of it. And then you're just gonna measure up each of these right into the little broken line. Then we're gonna flip it over and we're going to add our tab. So to add our tab, we just wanna take one of these pieces, it doesn't matter which one, we're just gonna line it up to the right of the tab so it creates a little V right there. Now from here, we're gonna take this third donut, line it up on the top, and we're going to just gently hug our fasteners over. We don't want it to be too hot tight, because if it's too tight, it's not going to move correctly. So we just wanna gently hug it over and make sure that you don't get any adhesive on the little corner, like down in the little crease. And now the moment of truth. You're gonna slide it up to close and down to open. And that's how you create your magic iris. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and work on our birdhouse extension. And as you can tell, if you put the little birdhouse and I put this one all together, this is definitely larger than the birdhouse itself. So it would be kind of cute if you used, like there's a couple different pieces you can use. Um, this is an extension piece, it's an add-on, and that would be cute, kinda, I think, it might work, I don't know, that's just an idea, but what I did was I actually went out, I've been avoiding trying to purchase this one, but I, I purchased this add-on piece, and again, I took the extra measure, and I didn't have to, of cutting this out, but it originally was in the middle, you don't have to cut that out of there, the die, you can leave it as is. The only thing is you won't get a perfect little circle, but that's okay. So this is one of the Magic Iris add-ons, and we're going to use that to create this first um, birdhouse. So I am going to take these, and I just, they're white, I did them in white, and I want to add some color to this. So I'm going to use some crown meat on this, and maybe a little bit of clear sky. I'm not real sure since my birdhouse that I'm using is blue. I think I might just stick with the crown me. And I want this piece to blend in relatively um, smoothly with this. So it kind of looks like one and it lines up. I'm going to do this purple as well. And that's why I did not blend in my tab. That's why I didn't color it. I am going to throw a little bit of water on this just because I like that watercolory type look.
going to take my, my magic iris now and I need to make sure that it's in the closed position in order for this to work because I want to line up my tab up here with the circle in the middle. And to line up the tab, it needs to go on like this. And there's gonna be a little bit of an extra, um, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of cutting, which is to be expected. So let me go ahead and get my adhesive. going to want to clip away that little itty bitty extra part of the original tab. Don't cut any of your new tab away. You're just going to cut that portion away. And then from here, we're going to put this on. And so I want to position it in a way that it looks like that. So that's pretty good. Once this is adhered, you're going to turn it over. And since there is some additional dimension back here, you want to take pop dots or foam tape and you actually want to use that to adhere it to your card base. So to adhere it to the card base, you are going to just take a regular A2, which is 4.25 by five and a half card base. And I went ahead and stamped this sweet little peacock from one of the Simon Hurley stamp sets. I'll have it linked down below. And I had centered it up before, so I'm just going to make sure that I have this open now so that I make sure that I get it fairly well. There we go. Shut that down, make sure that it all fits. It does, perfect. And then from here, we're gonna add our sweet little birdhouse that I already have put together. And for this birdhouse, I'm going to be utilizing uh, the bird, the little wing, all the good stuff, the little heart. This is a little uh, peg for the bottom of it. And then I'm gonna use a sweet little flower with a leaf set and the center to the flower, I'm going to just dab in with stickles. Actually, I'm going to use liquid pearl and I'm going to use the hydrania liquid pearl on that. You could pop dot this up if you wanted to. However, I think that there's a lot of height on this already. So I'm gonna go ahead and just adhere mine with glue. There we go, such a cute little card and relatively simple. If you wanted to add a sentiment on the front, you definitely have enough, enough room on the top, but check this out. There's the little sweet peacock in there. So I'm gonna show you uh, two more examples on how you can use this birdhouse die without the add-ons. You do not need the magic iris for this. You don't need um, the other, this piece for it either. So you may be looking at this going, well, that's cute, but I don't want to be that interactive, which I understand. So for this one, I'm going to actually show this to you on a slim line and then I'll show you the other samples of it. 
And this is a slimline that I created with um, Clear Sky Simon Hurley ink and then um, also, I think it was Overzealous on the bottom. I utilized his stencil, there's a stencil set, and I just popped those clouds on. So for this one, I'm actually going to use a sweet little yellow birdhouse and I also cut out this little birdhouse from the Simon Hurley stamp set that I've been using. I'll have it linked down below. This is gonna go in the center of this little yellow one. And then I'm also going to use white little tulips in addition to the little leaves. And these tulips actually are part of the birdhouse set too. So you get a lot of fun little pieces included. So let's go ahead and just assemble the birdhouse. And I was going to leave this little one white, however, this little bird white, however, I think I wanna make it blue. So I'm just going to use my leftover ink on my um, blender, cause there's totally enough there. to just blend that through. And now I have a sweet little blue bird. And I'm going to take and put the little wing on. So on that one, I did it a little bit higher, but on the other birds, you can position it however you'd like. So I'm gonna set this aside for now, and then I'm going to take my yellow birdhouse and just assemble it. For the little post that it stands on, I need to kind of line it up, but I want to put my leaves and flowers on it as well. So I may do a thin layer of glue down the middle so that I have ability to do that. Because I'm going to need to trim off some of this. For the slimline card, I didn't I didn't tell you this, and I meant to. I actually made this out of a piece of white card stock. I it, it, original size was eight and a half by eleven, so I left the eight and a half size, and I cut the other size down to a seven, and then from there I scored it at the three and a half, and that will fit into an A two card. And I want to put this little guy too down, so I just need to figure what's a good um, height. And I think that that's pretty good. And this little sweet thing is gonna go in the middle right here and I can add that at the end. I'm gonna add this little birdie. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use pop dots to pop dot on the sweet little baby nest of bird, the bird cage down, or the bird house that has the sweet little babies in it. And now we get to add in these little leaves.
and there you go. So you have a pretty cute little slimline card um, utilizing that little birdhouse add-on that you didn't have to use with the Magic Iris or any other add-ons. So cute. And there's still even some room on the top for the sentiment. If you wanted to make your birdhouse even taller, you could definitely cut your post longer. Let me show you another example of a two more cards that I created. This simple principle only on an A2 size. So I used the post that was provided for me with the birdhouse on this, and I just did my sentiment directly in the center and just added just some simple elements. So I have seen these done up really amazing. A uh, lot, and so you can go as simple as you want or really extravagant. And then the last one that, the first one that I did was that traditional one and I just used pretty much the same color and then it was rosy, I believe it was, and then open it up and it has that little sentiment in it as well. And again, the sentiment will be listed down below. It's by Concord and Knight. So these are just some ways that you can use your stencils in a different way. Like you don't, if you have an add-on there, think about it in a creative way. Like, can I do something different with this? Like, do I have to just use it with what, what it was created for? And I say, no, you don't. You can totally do some other creative things. And this add-on is just super, super cute. You can even make it seasonal. You could, uh, for Christmas, you could swap this out for a cardinal. Uh, that would be really cute. You could swap out the bird also for, like you could build a vine of flowers and things for, um, the, for the spring, um, for summer. This would be really cute and some beautiful bright colors. And then for fall, you could actually create a wreath on the outside of this that would be darling as well. So it's fun to think outside the box. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some ideas for creative uses with your add-ons. Until next time, I'm Bets Golden.